Well, it's my turn. Okay. As we face the new year, as it's marching by, half over, as far as this month, uh, th these are a few words that came to my heart and mind, and I wanted to share them with you tonight. Uh, from John chapter 12, one verse and verse 43. I was reading this uh, verse a few weeks ago uh, these words just almost like jumped out from the page of God's word and echoed in my heart and mind and I began to write and write and write and, and pretty soon there was just a little a sermon devotion that God laid upon my heart and I didn't know when he wanted me to give it till today so we'll share it with you uh, as we look at <clears throat> the praise of men. The praise of men. In John chapter 12 and verse 43, the scripture says, For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Could, could we read that again? And it, it's hard to believe for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Who are you living to please? Who are you living to please? It may be our parents, our spouse, our family, our friends, our peers, our boss, or even ourselves. In this account, John tells us the Pharisees wanted to please man. I believe the men in this verse were their peers. The praise of each other. The adoration of the other Pharisees. Many years ago, a psychologist did an experiment with a group of people. He drew a line on the board with one line shorter than the other. He put one person in the room with other people and asked the people in the room which line was shorter. But unbeknownst to the man, he had prearranged with the other people to say that the one line was shorter than the other when it really wasn't. The majority of the time the person said the same thing as the other people. The reason being he wanted to please his peers. He didn't want to be out of favor with the crowd. The Pharisees made a decision. They wanted to please man. Could have been each other. Could have been the adoration of the people. To see how they prayed on the street corners and how they gave. Could have been each other. We, we don't exactly know, but we do know that it was they loved the praise of man more than the praise of God. And as I got to thinking about that statement, there are a few thoughts that came to my mind about the praise of man. And one is, the praise of man is fleeting. In other words, the, the, the praise of man comes and it goes so quickly. And I believe Solomon understood that when he uh, wrote the book of Proverbs, when he tells us in Proverbs 27 and verse 20, Hell and destruction are never full. So the eyes of man are never satisfied. As the finding pot for silver and the furnace for gold, so is a man to his praise. He tells us in verse 24, For riches are not forever, and doth the crown endure to every generation. In other words, the praise of man, the... the uh, praise that people may give, whether it be applause or favor 
or fortune that may come our way because we're seeking to please other people. When I was uh, just a little kid, uh, I loved uh, sports and played sports. I played baseball and football and uh, took up a lot of other things. Nothing ever really seriously, but just enough to enjoy it. And my uncle, who was about my same age, was more of a brother to me than a brother, and we did athletics together. And one of our heroes in the 60s was Mickey Mantle. And uh, there's a track, one of my favorite tracks there, uh, on the track rack. It's hard to get because uh, it's kind of out of print, but uh, I, I think this new generation, they don't know who Mickey Mantle is, <laughs> uh, these millennials. But uh, if you're a, a baseball fan, you know who Mickey Mantle was. And he was the home run king by hitting uh, 60 home runs in a single season. But in 1961, Roger Maris beat Mickey Mantle's home run in a sing season. Well, lo and behold, Mark McGuire beat his record. Barry Bonds beat his record. Sammy Sosa beat his record. And as far as home runs are concerned, Babe Ruth hit 714, and he was the home run king for years. Hank Aaron, as you know, hit 755. Barry Bonds hit 762. But isn't it strange that the praise of man is so fleeting? whether it be in sports, whether it be in the Hollywood scene, and even in a lot of things, the praise of man. We seek the praise of man when it is so fleeting. Maybe our bosses, our friends, our people at work. I remember when I worked for Blue Cross for many years, uh, almost 10 years, and um, it was a wonderful job that God gave me. And uh, when I left, they offered me a supervised supervisor position which was a lot of money at that time and uh, but I, I turned it down and said no God has other things for me a number of years I went back to that company and went back to that second floor that I'd worked on for almost 10 years and you know you just thought you were somebody and you thought you know, I'd worked and held this department together and so many changes and things I'd done and uh, things I'd implemented and throughout the, the mail department. And so I, I went in there a number of years later and there was one lady working there that was working there when I was there. And uh, we talked for a little while and people were busy and it's kind of like, nobody knows me. <laughs> Who cares? I, I came and I worked and I'm probably not missed. The praise of man is so fleeting. The praise of man is so faulty. It's so faulty. You see, the Pharisees were seeking the praise of each other, the praise of others. They were wrong in their standing for the truth. And people were praising them about their long prayers and their giving and or their religious robes and garbs and they knew the language and all this praise and adoration. It was so faulty. Jesus called them blind guides, serpents, vipers, whited sepulchers, hypocrites, and fools. What? All that praise and adoration that came from uh, maybe each other, maybe from the peers and everybody, it was, it was faulty. You see, oftentimes men do not have all the facts. They don't know the truth. You might have heard recently about a mayor a big town that praised by the media and everybody else and wrote a book about it. And then when the facts began to come in, the media turned on him and so did everybody else. 
You remember those records I told you about? Mark McGuire and all of his home runs? It was tainted. It was during the steroid era. Oh, Barry Bonds, he had more home runs than Hank Aaron. You don't hear anything about it. It was tainted. How about Sammy Sosa? I, it was tainted too. You know, there there's been pastors, men that I looked up to and I thought they were great men. Men that spoke at Highland Park Baptist Church. Thousands of people. But later on it would come out that these men weren't exactly what they appeared to be. And what people praised them and all their records and things that they had broken and the praise of all the people. It was faulty. It was faulty. The praise of man is foolish. Men praise one another. Pat us on the back. We look for the praise of man and the adoration. And that's what the Corinthians were doing. You remember? Boy, look what a fine church we are. Look uh, how good Christians we are. Well, how do we know we're good Christians? Well, because I'm comparing myself to you, and I'm better than you are, so we must be pretty good guys. And Paul said, For we dare not make ourselves of the number, or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves, comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. The praise of man is so foolish. But I want to turn your attention to the latter part of that verse that says more than the praise of God. Why should we seek the praise of God? These Pharisees made a decision they sought the praise and adoration of man more than the praise of Jesus Christ. First of all, I believe because pleasing God is eternal. The praise of man is so fleeting here today and gone tomorrow. Why not invest in something that's eternal? Jesus said, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. That, that speaks of something that's lasting, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, where thieves do not break through nor steal. So when you think about the, the praise of God and pleasing God, it's eternal. I can take it with me. In fact, Jesus would later on say in that same chapter, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What a decision. They chose the fleeting temporal praise of man for the eternal reward and praise of Almighty God. Pleasing God is rewarding because God has all the facts. God sees and He knows the hearts and the minds of men and what is important. And Paul was addressing Timothy, you remember, the son that got all tangled up in the world. And he said, No man that warreth and tangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Paul said, Pleasing him. That's what he was living for. In fact, that's what he was dying for. 
He said, I'm now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. Almost sounds like you're getting ready to catch a flight. He is a heavenly flight. He's flying home to his reward. And he says, I've fought a good fight. I've finished my course and I've kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge. You see, God sees through all the faults and failures and God, the righteous judge, He's got all the facts. Shall give me at that day, but not to me only, but unto all them also that love His appearing. Pleasing God. Again, David would echo that wonderful truth in Psalm 147 and verse 1. Praise you the Lord for it is good. They sing praises unto our God for it is pleasant. And praise is, is comely. In fact, the writer of Hebrews would tell us in Hebrews 13 and verse 15, By Him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips giving thanks to His name. You see, the, the disciples in Acts, when they had, had suffered for His name, and they said they counted it worthy. You mean we, that we could suffer for Jesus? What, what an honor. Not only that, pleasing God is, is commanded in the Scripture. As we've already read in Timothy that we should please Him. But in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 12, it says... I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church while I sing praise unto thee. And of course he's uh, quoting uh, the Psalms. But again, David reminds us throughout the Psalms our, our duty and our command to, to sing praise to the Lord over and over. There's a number of scripture that we could read, but may, let me just share a few of them in Psalm 34. One, I will bless the Lord at all times. Isn't that hard to do sometimes? His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Sounds a little bit like 1 Thessalonians 5.18 that says, In everything to give thanks. In Psalm 51 and verse 15, David said, O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. And then in Psalm 107 and verse 8, he says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness, for His wonderful works to the children of men. And then a classic verse is Philippians chapter 1 and verse 11, where he says, Be filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, and to the glory and the praise of God. You see, pleasing the Lord, it's, it's eternal, it's rewarding, it's commanded, and not only that, it's satisfying. In 1 Peter, Peter again reminds us that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. How that we enjoy pleasing God. And that may be our only reward. As Paul laid down his life in 2 Timothy, ready to 
go to be with His Creator, just knowing that He had pleased God, that was a reward. And of course, Revelation chapter 19 and verse 5 tells us the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down, worshiped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye His servants, and ye that fear Him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the voice of many waters, and the voice of mighty thunder, saying, Hallelujah! For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to Him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and His wife hath made herself ready. You see, part of the Jewish wedding was the bridegroom would go back and prepare a home, prepare the house. And during that year called a betrothal time, the bride would be getting herself ready. Getting her wedding dress, getting her jewels ready, getting everything ready. And then at the appropriate time, the bridegroom would come. He would come to her house. And she, ready and prepared, would hear the bridegroom with his uh, host coming to get her. Why? Because she had made herself ready. Is everything in place? My hair, my gown, everything is prepared. And that's the way we should be. That we should live to please Him. And if that's all the reward we get, what a wonderful reward it will be. To cast our crowns at His feet. You remember what Mary said? He hath filled the hungry with good things, but the rich He has sent empty away. And this verse sadly says, they love the praise of man more than the praise of God. Oh, there are times we, we do need to please man, whether it be our job or our parents or our authority in our lives. But I'm talking about who you're living for in your life. Who are you seeking to please? Is your desire to please Him? It should be this year. It should be. Let's pray together. Father, as Paul said, that we might please Him who hath chosen us to be a soldier. And Lord, as I think of all the many hats that I wear, it should be my desire to please You as a husband, as a father, as a pastor, as a principal, as a Christian. There's one that I should be living for to please, and it's you. When I make my decisions on a daily basis, help me, dear Father, to ask myself that question. Is this pleasing to the Lord? Is this going to glorify God? Is this God's will for my life? Is this what God wants me to do? Help me, dear Father, this year, and help our church that we might seek not the praise of man, but the praise of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's 